Look, I mentioned that the previous weekend, not last weekend, I also went to the Hunter Valley just to see people who'd written to me trapped by drought. And I don't think Metropolitan Australia understands any of this, but they feed us. They feed us, these people. And as my old man would say, if the day comes when they can't, we're buggered. Just imagine if it was our business and the product we were selling, we were getting the same price as we were in 1981. Cattle prices today are the price they were in 1981. But the cost of freight in 1981, if you wanted to shift them to a gist, is 2000, was $2,000 a B-double. Now it's 7000 The price you get for your cattle is the same. I don't know how people survive. That's why I went. To move 1,000 cattle from the Hunter Valley to Victoria is 10 B-doubles, $70,000. Once you get them there, you've got to adjust them. $6 per animal a week, 6000 a week, 24000 a month. And when I went there last weekend, the drought was so bad, they've had a couple of inches of rain since. My farmer friend had to shoot some of the stock. We have, and yet we're saying we can feed Asia. We're saying we're the great food bowl. We're destroying our farmers. There used to be an electricity rebate. There used to be a freight rebate. The Gillard government cut all that out. But these farmers need power to activate the bores to get some water. But the price is so great for the power, they can only use it at night time because that's only when they can afford it. Farmers start selling everything because they can't afford to feed them. I went on the road with some of this stock last Saturday week. Just put a sign up, says cattle ahead. And then you mustered them on the road, grazing them on nothing. No protein, no nutrients, just dry grass gives the cattle a belly full. What's to happen? Do we just say nothing? I was four hours from Sydney. I was two and a half hours from Newcastle. And no feed. This is drought, big time. Queensland is worse. Queensland, I hope to get up there. And see these people. But there are 1.35 billion people in China. We could feed them. But not if you bury the farmer. And not if you go play lip service to this mining invasion. So what is happening? It's unbelievable. We've got an animal welfare problem on our hands. If something isn't done by way of supporting these farmers, there'll be dead animals all over the country. And that silly woman, Julia Gillard, sucking up to the ABC, stopped live cattle ex exports to Indonesia. Senator John Madigan rang me last week, a senator from Victoria. And I don't care what party he's from, he actually happens to be from the DLP. A very caring man. He said in his maiden speech on the 25th of August 2011, everywhere I go I meet Australians who feel that they've lost their voice and that no politician from either side of the fence could give a damn about their future or the future of their families and communities. That's what he said. Years after, year after year, Workers, families and small business are alienated by decisions of successive governments. He said, every year ordinary Australians, that is the people we are supposed to represent and defend, lose more and more control of their land and its resources. He said in his maiden speech, these ordinary Australians actually own this country, not us, their elected representatives, not the multinational corporations and not the overseas buyers of our resources, our farms and our future. We're the representatives, he said, of the Australian people, not their masters. And yet decision after decision made in this parliament, said John Madigan, Senator Madigan, strips the Australian people of the ownership of their own country. He's on the line. John Madigan, good morning. Morning, Alan. How are you? I'm OK, I suppose, like you are. Nothing changes, does it? Well, Alan, it's pretty much the same old, same old, isn't it? Um, um, you know... As you mentioned, you know, we, we're told that we're going to um, have this Asian century for food, you know. But are we going to have it? Are our farmers, our rural communities going to have it if we, politicians, the bureaucracy, the people as a whole, stand by or actively participate in their destruction? Now... You know, when I've visited places in the Riverina, for instance, around, you know, Colin Gully, Geraldry, Dunulaquin, go over the border into Ben Jeroop near Kerrang, people in Mildura, Swan Hill, and you talk to them about the so-called so Murray-Darling Basin plan and the amount of anger and hurt and disillusion mm -hmm. that 
that's throughout rural, regional and rural Australia, mm-hmm. and even, you know, and people in urban Australia in our cities who are yep. just saying, what the hell is going on? They do say that. They do. I mean, you talk about the Murray-Darling. So we then take water from the farmers, which the farmers have paid for. They get no rebate. And by taking the water, we make the farmer unviable and unproductive because we need, quote, unquote, environmental flow. Yeah. Well, Alan, you know, we go on about this so-called plan of the Murray-Darling Basin. Like, I visited some uh, farmers at Collin Gully there and um, in New South Wales, west of Wagga. And uh, what they're proposing to do is to have um, man-made flooding. And as you and a lot of your listeners will know, you know, there's... um, Many chokes, you know, along our river systems, but two come to mind for me, like at Millewa and Dharma. Um, we're going to have overland um, flooding. You know, um, if you read in the uh, former Murray-Darling Basin Commission data, um, they're saying that, um, for instance, that there's um, further losses, um, you know, as evaporation as a result of yep. overbank loss. That's right. Um, you know, on shallow ground. Mm. Now, this is their, um, the Mark Dowson Commission's own um, yep. data, but they no, no. seem to ignore it. You know, there was... But three... just, coming back, just coming back to this drought thing which you've talked about, I mean, yeah. how do you pay bills when you've got no income? How do you pay bills when you're paying $70,000 to freight 1,000 cattle to Victoria and paying $6,000 a week in adjustment fees? So do we say, oh, well, that's his worry. Forget about him. Don't worry about him. So what's the future? Where is the future? Where is this great agricultural industry which employs more people than the mining industry? Well, you know, Alan, obviously there's a huge disconnect, as you've pointed out on many occasions, between the rhetoric and the reality. But at the end of the day, we're not talking about some bloody pie chart in an office. We're talking about people. Mm. Now, you know, we need to have, you know, a vibrant farming community. We need a vibrant food processing community. We need a vibrant manufacturing community. You know, I don't just want to see a nation where we simply dig holes in, holes the, in the ground, turn our kids into a nation of drink waiters and educate our competitors in how to bury us. Then we go, you know, we've, we've got a, um, a potential drought on our doorstep. As you said, there are places in Australia now that are in drought. Some of us have been lucky and had a bit of rain. But, you know, what are our government, state and federal doing? to prepare for the next drought, Quite. other than proposing yep. to send valuable fresh water yeah. down the river system. That's correct. With, you know, with uh, dubious outcomes. Dubious outcomes. And, and, John, we don't harvest one cup of water when it falls. And so here we are now again, and then we sell Cubby Station to the Chinese, which has got more water than Sydney Harbour. Uh, you hang in there. You keep going. I'll keep going. God only knows where we're going, but we'll keep going, John. So, uh, Alan, one thing I'd yep. like to say is, look, today is the close of submissions um, for an inquiry we're having on Australia Post. Yeah, and, good. And the enormous um, contribution that, you know, the little LPO makes... In well, I'll rural, tell you what, look, I've just got to take a finance report. You hang on and go back there, and if need be, I'll talk to you tomorrow about that. Yeah. That's very, very important, this Australia Post inquiry. Hang on there and, and just give us those details off air.